Hello and welcome to Business Insider with Mario Taniguzzi on Megapix Media. Joining me today is Bev Dalby, who is a research fellow with the School of Public Policy at the University of Calgary. Thanks for joining us today, Bev. Uh, good morning. Okay, um, you yourself and, and a few others are authors of a new report that came out uh, recently called uh, Is the Non-Residential Property Tax Killing Alberta Investment? So I guess the question is, is it? <laughs> well, the word quill killing is a bit strong in this context, but our paper shows that a higher non-residential property taxes uh, reduces uh, business investment in buildings and structures uh, in Alberta cities. Okay, tell me, uh, maybe explain to people how we got to this point of where the uh, the non-residential taxes, uh, in particular in Calgary, uh, you know, have, have gone so high in the last few years. Well, I think there's always been a, a differential between the residential rate and the non non-residential rate. It has varied over time, as has the non-residential property tax rate. It's gone up and it's gone down, but as you as you are aware, in recent years it has gone up uh, quite significantly. Now, part of that increase in Calgary was due to replacing the business tax, which was a tax uh, paid by the occupant of a property based on some notion of rental value, with uh, the non-residential property tax. Now we think that both the business tax and the non-residential property tax are detrimental to uh, investment. So uh, that uh, switch by itself was not really, or added to the burden on investment. But the increase in the non-residential rate has gone beyond uh, just replacing the business tax. And part of that uh, I think is due to the decline in the value of the downtown office buildings and the city council in Calgary has operated under this view that at least previously 52% of the property tax revenue should come from the non-residential sector. So if uh, a, a significant part of it goes down in value, they have to raise the rate in order to collect it from the rest. And then as we know, that has created all kinds of in, substantial increases for uh, non-residential property outside the, the core of the, the city and the city has taken various measures to try to cushion that but uh, yeah it's it's basically because we've tried to over I think over rely on non-residential property taxes to fund municipal services in the city of Calgary. So that over reliance on on uh, say property taxes uh, is that something, you know, I, I think most municipalities anywhere in Canada, right, are, are, are kind of in the same boat, right, where uh, heavy reliance on property taxes? Well, heavy reliance on property taxes, but in particular, heavy reliance on non-residential pro yeah. property taxes. So, and if you look at, at residential property taxes in, in Alberta, generally speaking, they're, they're, not, uh, they're not terribly high compared to elsewhere in Canada. So there is scope, I think. I mean, it's a, it is a difficult time for families, for households uh, in Calgary, in other Alberta cities because of the downturn in the economy. But I think over the longer term, the uh, economic impact of having a uh, high non-residential property taxes will be very harmful and, and so we should try over time to re rebalance the burden uh, away from the non-residential sector to the residential sector. Okay, Are, what is the impact of, of lower investments? Well, uh, that's, but the investment that, of course that we're looking at is what is subject to a uh, property tax, which is investment in buildings and structures. but. Buildings and structures are used by businesses to create uh, output, to, to produce output to, and employ people to, to generate output. We're talking about, you know, uh, factories, uh, warehouses, uh, uh, various kinds of commercial uh, establishments, as well as uh, off office buildings. And all of that generates uh, uh, employment uh, and, and wage income. So ultimately these, Taxes uh, do affect uh, living standards in the city of Calgary, well, in all cities. Yeah. 
When you look at uh, one last thing, Bev, when you look forward uh, into the future, uh, you know, you know, this has been a hot topic, again, uh, specifically in Calgary, right? It's been a very hot topic for the last few years. Um, do you see any change there uh, taking place? Uh, uh, although we do have a municipal election coming up in October and maybe things will change, but um, what, you know, what do you see in going into the future in this area? I think it will become an issue in the upcoming uh, city election. I, I think the current policy in Calgary, again, is, is probably not sustainable. They have dipped into the uh, funds that the city has for sort of rainy day funds, etc. I mean, there's a limit to, to the extent they can do that to shelter the uh, parts of the non-residential properties uh, values from, from really these high, high rates. And so I think they, there will have to be a, a full discussion of this topic. And um, I, I'm hoping some of the ca candidates for alderman or, or mayor will uh, promote the idea that we have to rebalance the property tax burden in Calgary. Okay, super. Well, thanks very much, Bev, for joining us today. Thank you for having me on your program. Okay, super. That was Bev Dalby, who is a research fellow with the School of Public Policy at the University of Calgary. This has been Business Insider with Mario Tanaguzzi on Megapix Media. Thanks for joining us today.